the spirit of homosexuality is of their father, the devil. It's not them, the person. It's the spirit that made a home in them. And it came from them overreacting to some sort of a situation in life, whether it's from someone uh, uh, messing with them when they were kids or overreacting to an angry mother because you become like what you hate. So it's an evil spirit, and they can't overcome it if they don't accept it as a right. They have to see that, yes, they're stuck into it, but it's something wrong with it. And in that, they're able to overcome it. God will remove that spirit away from them. That was a clip from a video titled How to Stop Being a Homosexual by anti-gay conservative radio host Jesse Lee Peterson. And publicly, he's denounced homosexuality as a sin on numerous occasions. But privately, we know that Jesse Lee Peterson himself can't quite quit that cock. And the reason why we know this is because he accidentally outed himself like an imbecile in 2020 by liking a gay porn tweet on his public Twitter account. Here's my coverage of that. As you can see, you know, he he has all of his likes here and he liked a tweet from Donald Trump where Trump says, make America great again. And then if you scroll down a little bit more, you see that he liked a tweet from your daddy only fans, XXL boy, where there is a video of part two of a collaboration with Sean Boy and Anthony D. Um, and basically this is the video of two men having gay sex and it is censored. But um, as you can see, um, there is one man eating out another man's booty hole. <laughs> gotcha, bitch. <laughs> he, he, <laughs> he liked this on his public account for his show. <laughs> Oh my god, this is like, this is hilarious. This is hilarious. And he left that liked tweet up for hours. It was there for hours. And immediately after he realized that he liked that tweet, he set his account to private. Probably because he's going to scroll through and make sure that he didn't like any other gay porn tweets because he maybe thought that he was using his throwaway account, not logged into his public account. And um, I'm sure he's got to make sure everything is, is okay. So I don't know if he's even going to speak to this, but if he does speak to this, then I would imagine that he is uh, he's going to say he was either hacked or one of his interns or staffers did that and they've been fired because they're homosexuals and that's evil. But we all know what this is about, and I think that Lance from the Surfs put it best. How it started versus how it's going. Now, that video blew up, but regardless, he hasn't stopped with the anti-gay hate, even though we now know that he himself is a homosexual. Uh, he even attended a straight pride parade, which you're not straight, bud, so... You don't really fit in there, but regardless, he's continuing with this anti-gay tirade and things just got a lot worse for him because now the evangelicals are onto him and now they're trying to come after him as well. So Joseph Enders of the right-wing evangelical news outlet titled Christian Militant put together a documentary called Amazing Disgrace, which is a name that's admittedly clever, and in it they talk to men who either had relationships with Jesse or claim that he made unwanted sexual advances towards them. Take a look. These stories first came to light when Jesse's former co-host and alleged decade-long gay lover exposed him. So uh, we were sitting on the bed together and um, all of a sudden he turned to me and just looked, me, looked at me and he said, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? And he said it in a, in a tone that was really insistent. And I'd never seen this tone from him before. It was like kind of scary. It kind of scared me. Like, like what? What do you want to do? I knew what he meant. And then I told him, well, okay. And at first I'm scared and I'm like, okay, well, I'm, I'm playing along here. It kind of threw me off my game, I guess, in a way. I think later I realized that's kind of something that people do sometimes. It's, it's like the devil works in a certain way by intimidating you. And it throws you off your normal game. And so he said, what do you want to do? And he's like, okay, I'm scared. And then, uh, I said, I told him what I want to do. I, I mentioned sex acts, you know, that, we, that he knew about that I had already talked to him about that I was interested in. And next thing you know, he's ripping his clothes off and coming at me, basically. And I did the same, took my clothes off. And next thing you know, we're, we're fully at it, having, you know, not getting detail here, but 
basically full-on uh, sexual act. Former Bond House manager, 50-year-old Robert Santner, alleges he witnessed similarly strange behavior in 2021 between Jesse and current Bond producer James Hake. What I witnessed him, him and Jesse, were hugging in, hugging each other intensely, uh, rubbing up, rubbing each other's shoulder down stuff, and he came to a point where I actually saw him kissing him on the cheek, kissing him on the cheek and stuff, on the hallway, and talking all kinds, I can't remember what the words he said, but there were a lot of giggling, a lot of giggling in the hallway, in his James room, and then there was even one time that just really shocked the living the hell out of me, is I went to the laundry room and stuff, I mean, after I checked the, took the laundry out, and then when I got out and there was a door open in Jesse's room, and um, there I saw Jesse was sitting in the bed, and while James Hake was <clears throat> wrapped around bed sheets, completely around like a burrito with his head sticking out, and Jesse was like embracing him and hugging him and stuff, and then kissing him on the forehead, and I was like, uh, "Hey, are you are you all right?" My dude, they were more than all right. They probably just got laid. So, um, yeah, really funny. Um, something that stood out to me was the nonstop porno music in the background of this supposedly serious documentary. Um, very weird. I guess it added to the ambiance. But one thing that isn't necessarily clear is how many of these advances were repeated and unwanted. Because you have some men in this documentary, which you didn't see, saying that Jesse Lee Peterson hit on them and tried to engage in sexual activity with him, and it made them uncomfortable. But they don't necessarily um, say that there's a pattern with them. It seems as if he'll hit on them or make his move and then move on. But yet they still claim that he is a predator and exhibiting predatory behavior because according to this documentary, just being a homosexual in general means that you're a predator by definition. So a lot of these claims here, you know, it's, I don't know if they're alleging anything like nefarious when it comes to illegal activity, right? But that last guy that we heard from, they claimed that Jesse Lee Peterson tried to groom him. And that is a fundamental misuse of that term because you can't groom a grown man. Grooming refers to pedophiles who prey on children. So the use of that word has been completely bastardized by conservatives. And that's bad because grooming is something that is very serious that must be stopped. But they just say, oh, well, if a gay person is like, kissing in public, they're grooming. No, that's not what that means. But either way, so there's one of Jesse Lee Peterson's friends who has apparently been confronting him about this for years, which I did not know about. My assumption initially was that the first time when people learned about Jesse Lee Peterson potentially being gay was when he added himself. But apparently, you know, he's kind of been pretty brazen despite being in the closet all this time um so watch this clip and then towards the end you're actually going to see a humanist report easter egg because yes they took a portion of our clip and they play it so take a look here's a video of francis from march facing off with him at what appears to be the post office across the street from the bond studio oh that's nice he wants me to tell them how I was sleeping with my brother's wife. That's fine. But Jesse, why will you not speak on your homosexual behaviors? Francis confronted him again in the back of the building with Armand Martikian in February, capturing it all on video. Jesse Peterson, I've known you for 25 years personally. Will you come? See, he's not coming over to me. Will you at least stand there where you feel safe and talk to me. Stand up on your porch with the door open and, and, and shout out to me. Why won't you talk to me? I've known you for 25 years. I've accused you of heinous things and you will not talk to me. You coward. Francis admits there were also a few clues that should have revealed Jesse was a homosexual long before he ever found out. He wanted to see if I was willing to have a homosexual relationship with him, of course, because that's what he was all about. This isn't even the first incident. Jesse was embroiled in a homosexual scandal in October 2020, after his Twitter account liked a gay pornography image. After the tweet was left up for hours, Jesse's account was immediately locked down and set to private. One caller on his daily JLP show broadcast tried asking him about it, and Peterson hung up on him. Did you lock your Twitter account because you got caught liking a gay OnlyFans post? 
Amazing. Do you think I handle my own Twitter stuff? Oh, somebody else was did it? How come you locked the account? None of your business. What the, what the? Are you a homosexual or something? No, but it doesn't really why matter. You such no a, why are you such a, a beta male? What, you know all that stuff that's going on. It's not real. But you're being a girl right now. What making you be a girl right now? There's nothing wrong with it, Jesse. And nothing they, wrong they with you they, being a girl? They were, they were in. Goodbye. That last phone call was so cringeworthy because you can tell that Jesse Lee Peterson, who usually has an answer for everything, was scrambling. That was mm, that was really uncomfortable to watch. Um, but if you noticed, when they showcased the tweet, there was the white bricks, the iconic white bricks that we were using for our B-roll in uh, 2020 and 2021. So apparently Christian Militant is a pretty big fan of the Humanist Report. Thanks for watching. It's so amazing. The one thing that I thought that was funny about that was the guy that said, I've accused you of heinous things and you will not talk to me. Yeah. <laughs> it's... It's so weird because the heinous thing that Jesse Lee Peterson overall is being accused of here is homosexuality. He's bad because he's, he's a homosexual. But to me, the reason why I take issue with Jesse Lee Peterson is because of the hypocrisy. On one hand, publicly, he preaches hate. He convinces people that being homosexual is a sin and you can change and you shouldn't be gay and it's bad and you should feel bad and reject your children if they're gay or trans. But yet, privately, he's hitting on like every single guy he comes into contact with if this documentary is accurate. And I'm sure that they're, you know, embellishing a little bit here, but he's very clearly gay, right? But yet he is um, not willing to admit this and he's still preaching hate despite everyone already knowing that he's gay and maybe he's gay with his uh, producer. It's just bizarre. You know, the whole situation is really bizarre. Usually when you're caught, like Ted Haggard, this is another reverend who was caught. He was a hate preacher and he was caught with, I believe, a gay prostitute and meth, I want to say. Maybe it was coke. I'm not sure. But once he was caught, he was done. But Jesse Lee Peterson is trying to pull this Trumpian move and he's just trying to push through it. Very, very bizarre and bold strategy, but regardless, it seems to be working because he has a relatively big platform and he's still getting thousands thousands of views every single day. Now, I've got to say, I am sensitive to outing. Having been an individual from the LGBTQ plus community who's been outed myself, it's traumatic. It's something that you should never do. However, I firmly stand by the belief that if somebody is going to preach hate and they themselves are gay and we find out about it, I think we have a responsibility to out them, right? Because that's one less person preaching hate if we can get them to shut the fuck up once they've been exposed. Jesse Lee Peterson, however, is relentless and he's just sucking cocks behind the scenes and still talking about how homosexuality is bad and attending straight pride parades. Jesse, listen, if you see this, which I'm assuming he will actually, um, it's never too late to turn your life around and stop being a fucking imbecile, right? You're what, 60? probably maybe almost 70. I'm not necessarily sure, but it's not too late to change, apologize for all of the horrible things you've said about LGBTQ plus people, and then try to fix the things that you've done to hurt gay people. Try to right those wrongs and preach the opposite of hate. But he maybe just feels like, well, it's too late. I'm old, so I might as well just continue down this trajectory where I publicly denounce gay people and privately hit on every single guy I come into contact with. Again, like, I don't want to necessarily say that because this documentary is anti-gay itself, so they inherently believe that gay people are promiscuous. So, I mean, if you're going to take Jesse Lee's, uh, Jesse Lee Peterson's life, and this is everyone that you can find who he's hit on, then, okay, probably, probably not necessarily any different than straight men, right? But he seems pretty confident with himself, and he hits on a lot of dudes. And that to me is a little bit shocking because you're around evangelicals. You surround yourself around social conservatives and you'd think that he, he'd have some self-awareness or fear that they might out him if, you know, he, he hits on them and then they don't take it well. But no, he, he can't quit that cock as I stated. So, um, yeah, bizarre situation, but, um, Here's my policy on Jesse Lee Peterson. Anytime he opens his mouth and says homophobic or transphobic shit, then we have to share this video, not the Christian militant video. Share this video because don't give them any clicks or views, but share this video. Share the link to this video, right? A couple of weeks ago, he slammed Fox News for running the pro-trans segment. Okay, fine, Jesse, you want to do that? Well, we'll remind you 
about the skeletons that you have in your closet. And, and to be clear, you're seemingly not doing anything wrong. I mean, if you're making unwanted sexual advances repeatedly, then that is sexual harassment and that's not acceptable. But that's not necessarily clear in this documentary. But if you're just a gay person, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. As the caller who uh, asked him about his gay porn tweet pointed out. But if you're going to lie to people and you're going to preach hate, then that's a different story. So, you know, we're not going to let you live this down, Jesse, so long as you keep being a bigot publicly, because what you're doing is hurting LGBTQ plus people. So if you're a part of this community secretly, but publicly you're trying to hurt and damage this community, then fuck you. We're going to expose you. Sorry. Not a beta male.